Welcome back to the Own Your Awkward podcast. I'm your host, Andy Vargo, and every episode we get into what has made our guests vulnerable and how they've learned how to own their awkward in order to live their best life. Stay tuned so you can hear every awkward moment in today's show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Own Your Awkward podcast. I'm your host, Andy Vargo. And today we have the amazing and awesome David Ussery. David, how are you? Hey, hey, Andy. What's going on? Happy holidays. Yeah, it's that time of year. I I wasn't sure if we were going to make it in 2020 to the holidays, but we did. (laughs) And so we've got, what, like eight days left in the nine days left in the year. So woohoo. I mean, every day blends together for me before the pandemic. So like, Nothing's really changed in that aspect. So like, uh, you know, Halloween came and then it's, the, you know, Thanksgiving and then, it, you know, like, it, oh, okay, now it's the end of the year. Okay. Yeah. Well. <laughs> it's, it's kind of the year that never ended, but also flew by at the same time where you just kind of, your mind is just messed with the entire time. So, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. So, David, why don't you just let us know what you have exciting going on and what you've got going on in the world that uh, you want to make sure people know about you? Well, yeah, um, I'm, I guess uh, the biggest thing for me is that music is everything for me. Music is life. It's, it's, I don't know. It's just, it, it's, I'm really connected with music in a huge way. And um, I've been on a lot of music projects, a lot of bands and things like that. And one of the things back in the day when you were an artist, you just played a lot of shows and that's how you hopefully got famous. Um, but um, I, I want to actually share music more. I want to get out there and help people that that uh, maybe they're a bedroom producer or maybe they're an act, a, a band that's just been playing locally and nobody else knows about them. And I want to be able to help them share their music. So I started an A&R company, which is just like a development company for any genre, beat makers, um, house producers, bands, uh, guitar teachers, uh, painters, whatever it is, people who have art and want to share it with the world that don't want to have to go through all the pain in the butt of social media and, and ads and, you know, posting content and all that kind of stuff. I love doing that stuff as well. <laughs> right. Um, and that also gives me a place to be able to promote my own music and, and stuff like that. And I'm getting to learn. So I launched a new website. That's the new thing. Uh, goatrockpro.com. I'm taking on some new clients. Um, just some new ideas are coming in all the time. I wanted to do a, maybe a Christmas EP with all the artists that I'm representing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that that came about two days ago. That idea came two <laughs> days ago. So it's like, yeah, maybe next year. But... That's how my idea is. They always pop into my head like as the ship is passing. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Wait. Why didn't I have that idea when I was ahead of it? But, uh, yeah. but then, like you said, you, you tuck it away for next year and you'll be, you got a year to get ready now. Andy, imagine this. Imagine having your number one fan. You know that person that buys all your albums? They're the ones that never shut up about you online. They're always mm-hmm. like supporting you and talking to their friends. They're buying your merch. They're, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Imagine having that person talking to your fans as your representative. Helping yeah. you book studio time, helping you promote your band. Who better than your number one fan? Unless right. it's you. So, but, you so know, are you gonna be? Are you that number one fan? I'm the number one fan. Awesome. I love music so much. I love so many different styles that I can just I can feel your passion. Where are you coming from? And and get attached to that and hear the music and go. Oh man, I love it. Let's let's tell more people about it, you know? Well, and I love this this idea of where you're taking it because you actually, you know, you hit one thing on the head about musicians kind of going through that same going to gigs, trying to get ahead and wait to get discovered. And and yet the world is so untapped right now as far as how you can reach everybody. And I think a lot of people had really good lessons in 2020 on how much being stuck in lockdown doesn't necessarily have to limit you. In fact, it can expand how much bigger you can get because people are more open to things virtually and people have had to hone their skills with getting online and promoting themselves in a different way. And one thing that I learned when I started speaking, I became aware very quickly that I had two things to learn. I had to learn how to hone my speaking skills to be a good motivational speaker and talk in the right way in front of an audience and deliver my message well and come up with the right message. 
But the other side of that was learning the business of speaking and promoting and marketing myself. And typically when you're good in one area, you're not good in both or you don't have time to do both. And so what you're doing allows someone to focus on the music and let you carry their message out to more people. Yeah, and they have 100% um, control over what, the, you know, they can they can have 100% uh, creative control mm -hmm. or they can have 50%. Uh, and I want this to be almost like 100% outsourced. So, mm, sure. I, I mean, I'm, I'm good at some things, right? Right. But I may not be the best at everything. Uh, I can create a really cool website for you, but maybe you want something I can't do. But I know somebody that I that – I work with in the community that can set you up. Yeah. So and I want to really I, where that power I be comes that bridge in. too. I want to be that bridge and you hit it right on the head too. Most people are like, Hey, I just want to play some music and, and get my message out. They don't know. They're also starting a business mm -hmm. and, yeah. and it doesn't work like it used to. And this is a perfect time. We're being forced into what we were going to be doing anyway, which is mostly online, mostly communicating with the technology that we have. Um, and there's a lot of cool co collaborative apps coming out for music now, too, where you can in real time collaborate with other people all over the world. So awesome. it's a and perfect time. Yeah. So get with David, get your music out there. Uh, I, I can't wait to see this stuff. And, and I, whether it's this Christmas Eve or next, I look forward to seeing <laughs> what, what you have going on out there. So, yeah, cool. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, so David, I like to dig into every, all my guest souls and ask them, what's that awkward thing you've had to get over and, and learn how to own in order to get to where you are today? So what's that thing for you? Um, well, it's a, it's a great question. I, um, I think 2020 was a, a great soul searching time for a lot of us. Um, I, uh, I've crafted a pretty good bubble for myself. <laughs> Um, to, uh, I don't watch the news. I don't, you know, partake in political speech or any of that kind of stuff. Hey, I'm totally neutral and I have my own beliefs, but Hey, you, you believe what you believe and I believe whatever I, you're still cool. It's all good. Um, but one of the things I had to get confronted with is that I can't keep that bubble up, mm. um, all the time. I, you know, I have, you know, I have to be in the know for my children, for my family, for my uh, for my career and things like I have to be confronted with right. the things that I don't want to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, and 2020 uh, didn't have its uh, uh, had its fair share of confronting moments. So your, um, your bubble was popped or penetrated at least a little bit. A few times. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, and um and trying to deal with the idea that people, you know, you kind of, I kind of think the way I think is pretty simple and commonsensical. It, the mm -hmm. way I view life seems pretty simple. And so to me, I make the mistake of thinking other people see life the way I do. Sure. And so when I, when they don't, I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Why would you cross on a red light like that? Yeah. Like, well, I, I think that's exactly right because the way we all think should make sense to us, right? But but yeah. we all have come through the maze in a different route to get to the center and we're all taking different paths. And eventually most of us that I, the most of the people that I encounter regardless of their beliefs, you know, feel the same way about, treating people with respect, loving one another, being kind. The, the, the generally good things about people are typically in, in the, the base sense of their heart are the same. And then how they get there and how they share those is where we get into these differences. But, uh, but I think that's interesting that, that you're saying that, like, because it does make sense to you the way you think. And then when someone else thinks differently, all of a sudden, that's the quandary. It's like, well, how can you even think that? <laughs> so was there a specific event or something where you knew oh my gosh i gotta i gotta open up this bubble a little bit or was it a throat punch or what happened no it was it was shattered it was just like the whole <laughs> you know because i uh, the the pandemic i kind of played it off at first i was like ah oh, come on it's just a people are just getting hysterical and then it, when it really just hit it was almost like a 9-11 moment where it's like mm. everything has changed forever now like even if things go back to normal, we'll still always talk about this time. 
Right. So, so it's like I had to really confront, and it's something since I've turned 40 that I've had to confront many times is that, hey, maybe the beliefs that I had held before that I held, you know, based my life on, maybe there's new info. Maybe I need to reevaluate those, those things mm-hmm. and see if they still hold true for me. Some of them do, but not all of them don't. Not all of them do. So, yeah, it, it crashed in on me and really forced me to go, okay, a Black Lives Matter was a great thing. I had a, a, a preconceived notion about what that meant. Mm-hmm. My wife had actually had some extensive training. She's a, a teacher, so she went through some training on it. Um, and I was forced to listen to her point of view and go, huh, that's not at all what I thought it was. And I mm-hmm. felt kind of awkward in that manner going, I had based my my whole thinking on one way of thinking and then Huh, it's not it's not the case. Right. And I, and I think what we run into sometimes is anything like that, like Black Lives Matter or other things that are political or world events, we hear different people's takes on what it does mean. And I'm a firm believer that whatever perceived truth we hear first is what we cling to the hardest. So if you hear something from a certain perspective or angle, the first way that you hear it is what's going to be cemented in your brain and you're going to believe that. And then everything else is going to either reinforce that or prove it wrong. And you have to really try to be open-minded in order to see it from a different perspective. Especially if it's from somebody that you really care about or know or Mm -hmm. trust. Um, You've gotten good information from them in the past. It's like, well, this is, you know, it's how things like I've gotten good information from the past. It seems like we're on the same page. So it makes sense. And you right. kind of accept it sometimes. Um, yeah. yeah. And I, I, I have this concept I, I talk about sometimes about ridiculous truths. And, and I love that you talked about turning 40 and having to kind of relook at some of the truths that you believed. Because I, what, are, what I define as ridiculous truths are those things that we learned before we questioned them. Uh, you know, for example, is there a Santa Claus? And, you know, if, if we grow up believing and being told there's a Santa Claus, at some point we, we get old enough, sorry if there's any kids watching, that you learn that that's a little bit of a magical myth, right? <laughs> My and, wife would be mad too. <laughs> yeah, so, right. Yeah, but at the same time, if someone told you that as an adult, that there was a man who traveled around the entire world within a minute and was at midnight everywhere all around the world, you would know not to believe it. But for some <laughs> reason... You're, you learn it at a time where you learn it from people you trust, you learn it at an age where you believe things, and then you never re-question it. And I've had things like that about, you know, different things in life that I never questioned. And especially when it comes to faith and values and virtues, that they're just cemented in you. And then at some point you say, wait, why do I believe that? Yeah. And when you start to dissect it, it doesn't necessarily mean it was wrong, but that maybe it's not a two-sided coin. Maybe it's like a, a ball of gold and that currency isn't just one-sided anymore, two-sided. Now, why was it important? What, what, what made me make that distinction? Yeah. Try to find that, follow the money, like I tell my kids. <laughs> right. <laughs> if you want to know why something happened or why something didn't happen, just follow the money. Either somebody mm-hmm. got paid or somebody didn't get paid. That's what and my right. kid's like, what? Yeah. That's huh? like, eye-opening, yeah. right? <laughs> Well, and now to, to keep it focused on your awkwardness, yeah. how was that in that moment where that Band-Aid was ripped off? Did you, did you jump in all in with the, okay, now I'm enlightened in a new way? Or was there, was there some time where you kind of had to ease into it and have continued awakenings? Or how, how did that go for you? Kicking and screaming. Um, <laughs> it was, I don't, I don't like a... I actually she had gotten used to it by now, but I don't really like emotional shifts like that. And mm-hmm. um, it, it it really made me cling to my family, cling to my wife and my kids. It, kind of like when I went through my divorce, like I don't want to miss any minutes with them because this, you know, it was almost like a this is it, you know, mm. yeah. um, types of situation. I don't know what's going on, and I, I it's because I. I'd like to keep myself somewhat uninformed on the propaganda. So Mm -hmm. it's kind of self-imposed, but yeah, it was having a, having my wife and my kids around was a, was a savior, but I was in a dark place and I just had to naturally 
push through it. Counseling was huge. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and music and, um, and building this business. This is what has kind of been building. I'm building out of this darkness, trying to get to this. That's, <laughs> right. You know, like, and for a while I was like, do I really want to do this? Am I a CEO type person to, you know, build a company to do that? Do I have the, <laughs> am I too lazy? Like, you know what, right. <laughs> you know, all these doubts going through my mind and it's just like, it was this one thing that was just constant. I got to mm -hmm. get to that. Um, yeah. But most things have just been, I have to go through them organically. It's tough. It's, you know, rough, mm -hmm. but just being around a lot of people that support me. Well, and, and you mentioned that idea that, when you have that emotional shift that, that there's that uncertainty that you don't like. And I think that's a key thing for people to really understand and be aware of because we don't like feeling uncertain, right? That's just not a good feeling. We want to know that Santa's coming down the chimney. We want to know that what we've believed in or, or what we've taught and, and agreed on our entire lives, that, that that is a certain thing. So when something all of a sudden is, is exposed to other possibilities, it's very unsettling. So I, I understand what you're saying about just clinging to, okay, if these are uncertain, then I want to make sure that I'm close to my family and I'm close to the wife and kids and that, that I keep that as sacred as possible. Yeah. yeah. It, it's interesting. Uh, I, I mean, I've done a lot of counseling, a lot of uh, uh, self-improvement seminars and things like that. And the one thing that I remember uh, from a guy named Kyle Cease, which I'm sure you know, as a comedian, uh, he said that, you know, whenever something happens that's kind of bad in your life, mm -hmm. people always go, you know, deep down, I knew something, it was gonna be okay. At, right. at, some, at some point it would suck now, but deep down I knew it was gonna be okay. He's like, what if we lived there in the, mm. in the place where we know it's gonna be okay? Yeah. What if we just lived there all the time? And his, one of his favorite uh, phrases is, I hope I screw this up. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to make a mistake, but I'm totally cool if I do. Right. Yeah. I think that's such a, an important place to stay because then no matter what's going on, we can tell ourselves, well, this is temporary, right? Like my life's not the way I want it right now, but that doesn't mean my life is this way forever. This yeah. is not me for the rest of my life. It hasn't been me for, you know, and I, I've, I've learned to get a little better at that, whether it's, how I feel about my body, how I feel, you know, am I in shape? Am I bigger? Am I smaller? Whatever. It's like, this is me this year, right? This is, you got yeah. the 2020 version of Andy right now and the 2021 model hopefully will be improved upon, but sometimes the new bottles models aren't that great for a year or two. So, yeah. so we'll see, you know, we'll work the kinks out a little bit. It's in beta. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing that you mentioned too, was that idea that, um, that you're like uncertain about, your new role leading a business. And, and that's something that I've run into a lot. I can't tell you how many times I've quit my job working for myself in the last couple of years where I think, oh, this isn't happening. It's not moving forward the way I want to. And the one thing that I always come back to is I, I'll say to myself in that moment, well, at least I can say I did everything that I, that I, I tried hard and I, I did everything I could. And the next thought that immediately pops into my head is, but did you? <laughs> Did you really do everything that you could? Because you, because all of a sudden I start thinking about, well, I didn't follow up on this. I never called that person back. I never got David on my podcast. I was supposed to do that like a year and a half ago, right? And so, <sighs> so then I can, I can come back to the idea that, well, until I do those things, I haven't done everything that I could. And so it's too soon yeah. to quit. Yeah. It's the imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Like, oh yeah, I'm a YouTuber. Oh yeah, I'm a you know I own a production company. Yeah, but you don't do anything, right? right. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh well, yes, but you you do a lot of stuff, and it's our brain always goes, oh yeah, but you didn't. Like you yeah. know, when somebody goes, you know, I really think you're an awesome guy. What's mm -hmm. the first thing you hear in your head? Oh yeah, you're yeah, like yeah, but they don't but, really know. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, they don't know. They don't really know because I know who I am, and I'm a piece of shit. So. Right. Well, <laughs> And that's one thing, honestly, I was just thinking about this the other day with this um, kind of this cancel culture that's out there of just targeting things where I, I feel like we're, we're doing our kids a disservice by teaching them that someone can never make a mistake or has to be perfect across the board. Because I think that there is there are there are places where it's appropriate to, you know, knock people off their pedestal a little bit when you find out that they're not in the right um, that they don't have the right intentions. 
However, people are constantly growing and learning. And if, if someone, you know, maybe they, maybe they changed their mindset over the last 15, 20 years, and they've been evolving and growing as a person. And now all of a sudden we're saying, but did they ever say anything wrong? It's like, well, who hasn't? And so then we, that, that under, that puts us back in this imposter syndrome in our own heads of, but have I always been perfect? Have I always been good? And it's like, oh, that's not really healthy because no one really is. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So. It's, it's, it's hard. I mean, it, what, a, a book I'll recommend, uh, Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, uh -huh. about a language on this podcast, but uh, <laughs> it, it, that, that, I've, read, I've read or listened to that book like three or four times. That's and, still on my list to, to read or listen. You know, I, I do a lot of them um, audio, but I, I, I still need to do that one. Oh yeah, put it on your first. Put it up on your first list, dude. It'll change your life. Like, mm -hmm. and it's funny as hell too. And it's 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 a book about morality and morals and beliefs. Mm -hmm. It's okay. not just about using the F word. And he's like, that's the only way I could get it on bestseller list. I couldn't. Right. I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't <laughs> title the book. Uh, you know how to have good beliefs. You know, right. no one would buy that. So. <laughs> yeah, there is some. There is something to be said for marketing something in the right way. Um, yeah. I, I actually have this concept that I'm working on and I'm actually working on a blog article. It's along those lines, but the idea is that if I want to succeed, I need to STFU. And so that's going to be the blog article, something along the lines of STFU, which, you know, most people think of as shut the fuck up. Right. Yeah. yeah. But for me, it's stop talking and follow up because I'm paid to be a speaker. I love to speak. I podcast, I talk way too much, I run my mouth. Anytime I get an idea, I'm like, oh, we're going to do this. It's going to be exciting. I'm excited about it. And then I market the hell out of it before I ever did it. And, I, and then it's like, well, did you follow up and actually do the thing? So, so I've been really practicing shutting up and following up. It's like, just don't talk about it. And then once you've done it, put it out there, then, then market it. But, um, but it is that idea that you have to be a little bit sensational on getting people's attention somehow, whether it's dropping an F-bomb, whether it's, uh, and, and I'm not a fan of, you know, thinking that you need to do that every other word, because then it's not shocking anymore. You're just like, oh, that's that guy, right? Like, yeah, that's what you're going to expect. But when it's placed in the right time, and it's, and it's used in a way like the subtle, the subtle art of not giving a fuck, you're like the subtle art of the, just the idea of subtle art, and then having that word in the title, <laughs> the contradiction right there just draws you in. Right. Right, right. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It was, it was really, really eye-opening for me, especially on the idea that you can't make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, the idea that uh, you know, in social media, everything's perfect. So you look at your life and go, man, they're standing in front of a Maserati and they're, you know, they're kissing a, a hot blonde and they're, you know, making right. lots of money, and I'm sitting in my, you know, sofa slash bed, you know, waiting for my wife to use the one bathroom, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's. It's yeah. not, you know, but they're having, they're just showing you the good stuff. They're right. having the, the horrible moments too. Well, and I always wonder, you know, I, being in life coaching and, and motivational speaking, since I Google a lot of stuff related to that, my Facebook and my social media ads are constantly inundated with people advertising from certain walks of life. And I can't tell you how many ads I get of a person standing in front of a a beach property talking about how great their life is. And if you follow me and pay me all this money, then you're going to, you're going to have this life too. And I'll, all I can think of is how many times is that a timeshare or a, you know, a one week vacation they took and, or they drove to the state park and took a picture in front of the beach. Cause it's all about this image. And yet the problem is we, we buy into that too much where we think, Oh, I need to get there. And, Oh yeah. I got to show you something real quick. Hold on. Uh-huh. This is awesome. <laughs> so, I'm driving down the street driving home the other day and I see I see cash. Oh, nice. Laying in the street. Uh-huh. Just tons and tons. Yeah, of just a wad of cash. Like I'm like holy robbed crap. A bank. So it wasn't like a busy street. So I drove up and pulled over and I'm like, and I'm, I'm pulling all these things, twenties and, and tens and, you know, just ton, like, I'm like, Oh my God. And it, right. What? And then if you look closer on it, it says for motion picture use only. Huh. And I'm like, it's so, it's so real. Is it like fake money that was 
from being an like when they blow up a building and they have all this cash flying everywhere? I, I don't. I don't know. I wish you could see it. It looks. If you yeah, if you couldn't read it, it looks like it looks so real, wow. and it's like that the that's the kind of stuff they throw at like rapper, you know, oh, and yeah. music videos and stuff. Sure. And yeah, that they're, yeah. Where they give everybody, they give all the extras some money, and it's not for them yeah. to pocket. It's just that's yeah. interesting. I've never uh, seen that. Yeah, I, and, uh, so I, I took it home and I was like, "Hey, kids, here's <laughs> here's some money, here's some money." Right. And they're like, ah. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, the funny. people like it's not real. They they they. They pick and choose what they want to put on social media so that you'll be their friend and you right. don't see the fails. You don't see the screw ups. That's why people who do show the fails and the vulnerability and the screw ups are so popular because mm -hmm. people right. want to see that stuff. Because it's real. And and what's really sad is those people who are only showing the successes, they're only doing that because of their own insecurity, because they're afraid to show the vulnerability because they because they have that imposter syndrome and they have that fear of being found out, even if they're do they may be successful enough in their own right, but they're afraid that if they don't only show the success that, that people will know that they're, they're not really as successful in their own, in their own head. Well, it's part of the, it's part of the gimmick though. That's, yeah. that's part of the industry. You show right. that you've made lots and lots of money doing really not much at all like mm -hmm. the audience you're pro you're programming it to right uh, i said remember that guy i made tiny classified ads oh right <laughs> and sold eighty thousand dollars in just mm -hmm. 10 minutes like people want to be able to do that but the right. problem is, it, and it's built into every sort of mlm or mm -hmm. any sort of like alternate side hustle yeah the legitimate side hustles well, um, you, it's built into that. And my response has become, wow, I'm so happy for your success. If you're making that much, you probably really don't have that much time to spend on a $20 Facebook ad from me anyway. So good luck. Good job. <laughs> it's, it's cool, though. I'll give you I'll give you a free webinar where I'll share my <laughs> my big secrets to you. And basically, it's just a 30 minute ad with with the same type of stuff you could pick up yeah. off the Internet if you just Googled it. Right. Yeah, that's that's true. Because I've watched a couple of them. <laughs> Me too. But the, yeah, the keys you're always give it away for credit. free and then they'll buy from you. Yeah. Well, David, I cannot believe that time has just flown by so much. So we are getting down to the last couple minutes here. But before we go, I got to ask you, what's a tip you might have for someone on how they can own their awkward? You know what? Um, I tell my kids this all the time and it's not easy to do. Take 100% responsibility for what you did. Not what you think happened, but for what, what actually happened, what you did or what other people, just take responsibility. Once you do that, everything is open. You're not fighting it anymore. It's not, it's not admitting blame. It's just saying, yeah, I spilt the milk. Then it's sure. gone. It's over. <laughs> um, counseling is huge finding supportive people, reaching out. Don't be afraid to ask for help. You would be surprised how many people are hurting too. Mm -hmm. I love that. I think, and especially right now with everything people have going on in their own head, don't feel like you're alone. Even if you're alone, you're not really alone. Like we're, we're all out here and don't be afraid to pick up the phone and call, text, whatever. So yeah, well, TikTok's this is full of them. <laughs> right. Thank you so much. Be sure to check out Goat Rock Productions, uh, goatrockpro.com. Yes, they get that right. Me. All right. And uh, and let David Ustry be your biggest fan and get you promoted. So thank you so much, David. It's been a pleasure to have you here. I really appreciate all the things you've shared and your willingness to open up and own your awkward. Thanks, Andy. Thank you so much for listening in for today's show. Be sure to visit awkwardcareer.com to continue your journey. And of course, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends so they can find their awkward side and learn how to own it.